Hi everybody, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I'm really excited to show you um, not necessarily some new features, but some old features working with some gold features. And I, you know, I just want to jump in and show you. So we love the automation and we love all the different ways we can quilt using the automation. Um, and I'm really excited to show you a pantograph feature that really I think is underutilized um, when we're quilting because we're so used to the other placements and, and using, this is four point placement. And I'm really excited to, to teach you a little bit more about it and then let you go on your own and explore. So let's jump in and I just, I have my tablet, everything's hooked up, everything's doing great, and I've sewn my border, okay? So four point placement is usually used um, when you have a border on the outside and you want to quilt an edge to edge design on this intersection. So that's what I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna show you a pattern or the gold feature eclipse, and we're going to crop out some of the sections so we can add um, a different design or a word. So let me jump in and let's go to my tablet here. And I didn't set my safe area. Well, I did have it set for my border, um, but I wanted to go through setting the safe area again because I feel like there's some confusion. Hello, Karen, I'm coming to Alaska um, tomorrow. So I'm gonna be on a plane. So next week will be pre-recorded. So. I would know I won't see you there, but I'm looking forward to it. So anyway, so I'm going to talk to you about setting the safe area and making sure that we're setting it correctly. Your safe area always needs to be larger than your quilt top. So when you're setting it, just double tap on your QCT5. And then when this comes up, it says, make sure the sewing machine needle is up. Um, move your carriage to the middle. This is just so that it can check and see. So when you're setting up your quilting station for quilting, make sure that you're looking around, making sure that nothing is caught, there's no debris, there's no batting in the belt, there's no dangling threads um, hanging down so it can catch and everything. So make sure that you've got a clean area to work with because this will um, eliminate a lot of problems and eliminate the, the machine getting caught up and ruining your design as you're quilting. So make sure you put it to the middle and then when you tap on okay, you'll hear it engage. And what it's doing is it's checking to make sure that it can move the different directions. And then it's going to go through its firmware. Okay, and now we're open to our main screen, our home screen. So on this home screen, I'm going to go into pantograph. So before I um, did my pantograph, I measured my quilt. So make sure that you're measuring your quilt measurements, so your borders or whatever, the lengths, make sure that you're writing them down so that you can use them with automation. That's really an important thing that should always be at the top of your checklist. And now I'm going to move my machine up and off my quilt top, okay, onto my batting right there on the edge. I don't wanna sew off the edge so it's not sewing on the quilt itself, but <laughs> you are setting the parameters. So this is just setting a large enough area that as you're rolling, if you get a little inconsistent um, and it starts rolling one side, it's kind of shifting that you have your safe area set from top to bottom. So this is just giving you a little bit of that extra wiggle room that you need for quilting. So I'm going up and off and I'm gonna tap on this green part, part right here that says top left. I just tap right here. Don't tap up in this area because it's not gonna do anything. So if you tap up in this area, it's not even setting your um, top left safe area. It's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna know where to go. So you just tap on top left and you can push it all the way back so that the foot hits the take up row. That's not a problem because you're not gonna sew making it hit the take up row. You're just setting the area that you wanna quilt in. Okay, this isn't the size of your quilt top or anything. Now I moved up and over across my frame uh, to the 
to the right and I came down as far as the machine will reach. So till it hits the back or till it stops, okay? And then I'm going to tap right here on the screen, the bottom right. Okay, now I've set my safe area, okay? And when you look at your measurements that you wrote down for your quilt, they should be smaller than the 44.23. And, and that's, this is just not the total height of your quilt. It's just the safe area, total height. That is telling you how far the machine can sew before you have to roll the quilt. That is that measurement right here, the total height. So with my 19 inch machine, because I'm rolling my quilt and it hit this, I only have 15, 0.567 inches of quilting area. This also helps you um, make your designs the right um, depth as you're quilting all the way down your quilt. Okay, so I want to put in my measurements. I wrote them down. So my measurements are, it's 27 inches wide. This area right here, the center area is 27 inches wide without the borders, okay? So I'm going to put in my total width as 27. Now, you could use the, the measuring um, ruler if you wanted to, to measure the width, but it's not gonna give you the length. You can't measure the length. And it's really hard to measure the length while the uh, quilt is on the frame. So make sure that you're laying it down on a hard, flat surface or somewhere that you can get the measurements, okay? And write them down. So now I've measured it and my length is gonna be 41.75, 41 and three quarters. So that's not three quarters, that is. Okay, and notice how this part of my screen changes. Now, I'm going to show you this in um, power panel mode just because I want you to see how quick and easily it calculates making the design. Now, after I show you how to do this today, I want you to get on your tablets and play around and see how it works. It's so much fun to put them in simulation mode and just play with different designs and see how you can size them and, and just squish them together and just play, okay? So that's your homework assignment, is just to play around <laughs> using this technique. Okay, so now that I have my measurements in there, I can go in and select my design. So I'm gonna go in here and I've got all these cool designs and everything, but today I'm just going to use a stipple design. Kind of boring, I know. Well, I've got to hang on. Just I've got to change one thing. I've got to come in here and change it from basic mode to power panto mode. Okay. Now that I've done that, now I can go and select my pattern. Um, and so I could do a couple different ones. Um, but make sure it's not a block design. It needs to be continuous line design. Um, so when you're, when you're picking your designs, just kind of look at it. And also, as you're picking your designs, notice that I have a lot of um, um, horizontal strips here. So I don't want to pick a design in case it starts rolling. Um, one side starts rolling up and the other starts is, ro is staying down. It starts rolling irregularly. Okay, if it does that, if you pick out a vertical design that's going to sew across, it's going to show up on your quilt. So when you're picking out a design, look at your quilt and notice, okay, I have a lot of vertical des uh, horizontal designs, sorry, just know that it's across, okay, horizontal designs, um, strips. So I want to pick a design that kind of gives me, um, so my eye is moving up and down, up and down. So you're not going to notice this that much. Okay, so I am going to pick a stipple design. It's on the very last, right, right there. That's it. Open. Okay, and see how it filled it in? So it filled in and notice the height of my stipple, or that's the height of the pattern, I can sew, so it's about six inches, and just make sure that you feel like you can sew that six inch height all the way down, because you're going to lose some quilting area. If you have a rolling frame, and this is a rolling frame, it has two or three poles, and 
you're rolling all your fabrics together on this pole, so this pole's getting wider. Now, if you have a hoop frame, it's a little different. Um, you're not going to lose as much area or it's not going to get as small. It's going to be the same distance from top to bottom because it sits on top right here. So just know that you have to work within the frame parameters and the machine parameters. And if you'll remember that, you'll have a lot more success than trying to size something that's too big for it to sell. And then just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. So just remember those measurements are really important when you're quilting. All right. So I think that'll be okay, but I kind of want to make it a little bigger because I want it to sew a little quicker just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to tap on my plus and make it a little bigger. Okay. And then I want to space it out. Notice that right over here, you kind of have it hitting. You can see that it's a little darker in some areas. That means it might be really close. So I just want to space it vertically so just pull it apart just a little bit okay that looks pretty good i don't see anything overlapping so play around that's why i say play around um, when you're not connected because that's a great opportunity for you to get to know and understand the automation how it's going to react when you're using different designs and also i like to see what the designs look like i was just sitting here playing with that um trying to check out different designs and what they were going to look like and i just decided that this was going to sew quicker and faster okay <laughs> so we're using this one today and we're using Power Panto, but you don't have to use Power Panto. If you want to decide how many rows down and how many designs across, use um, Basic. If you want to size it so it's a specific size, use your Easy Mode. There's lots of different ways to quilt using the automation, and it's that's what's the beauty of it. It's so much fun for you as a quilter because you get to decide how you want to quilt. You're not limited to this just one way of quilting, and that's the way you're going to quilt the whole time. Come on, it, explore and have fun. So, okay, notice that I've set it up. It's about seven inches. I think we'll be okay, um, but this is just kind of one of those little quilts that, you know, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just going to come over here and you could play around with the designs, but over here and flip them and see what they look like. But just know that anything that you do to your design can will break the connections, okay? So it may not so connected all the way across. So if you're flipping it one direction or turning it or swapping, you're breaking those connections. And, and with every time you do that, um, you can, like I said, you'll have little breaks in between them sometimes. Not all of the designs do that. So that's why I say get in there and start flipping and having fun, seeing what the designs look like and how they're going to react. And then if you're in simulation mode, tap on sewing zones and you'll see the little clippings. But I think we're okay. So I'm going to tap on right here, sewing zones. All right. And then it's going to ask me if I want to save my design. Yes, you always want to save your design. Now, you can save it in two places. So I could have saved it before I started coming into this. I could have saved it up here with a little floppy disk. Um, or I can save it here. And I'm just going to say yes. And I'm just going to say Tuesdays. And I'll know what it is. And I'll now I put the name in. It popped up and I want to tap on enter. Okay, and notice that the Tuesday is now down here. And once it's down there, you can tap on save. And now it's saved. Okay, notice right here that I have a little jump, a little clipping. Uh, uh, so where it's going to jump from one section to the other. Now, when I'm quilting on the inside, if I was quilting from the edge to edge, I would want it to sew continuously because I was going to sew off my quilt and then I was just going to cut that excess off and put my binding on. But on this, I don't want it to do that because I don't want to sew a line down. I don't want to see that line or that sewing line down my quilt. So I don't mind if it's going to stop right here at all um, because I don't want it to sew down just in case it's not exactly straight. 
I just don't want it to do that. So I could go in and I could optimize it and clip that out. But because I don't want that sewn line, I'm not going to do that. So just know that. So for my first placement, okay, I'm going to come in. I want you to come in here to Sewn Manager. All right, and read the screen and see what it says, okay? It says, opening the zone manager allows you to select which zone to place. So if you had shut down for the day um, and you wanted to come back and continue quilting and you were quilting an edge to edge quilt or you had done part of it, you would come into the zone manager and pick what zone you were at, okay? And it says it will also reset the current placement of the patterns. Do you still wish to open the zone manager? And yes, we do. Okay. I've already selected four point, but I wanted to show you what it does. Okay. So right in here, you have the option to do use four point placement or you tap right here, center placement. Now, when you're quilting an edge to edge on a rolling frame, center placement is awesome. So go ahead and use it. Now, Four points is going to help you kind of adjust across uh, so your design sews a little bit more straight. So, you know, just use uh, you know, whatever method you want to use. So if you don't like um, the center placement, use the four point and see what it does on a quilt and see how well you like it. Then you'll know, okay, I don't want to use four point. It's an, two more markings and I just don't want to go through all that hassle. So just choose, but try it once, okay? <laughs> try it once. Okay, so I want four point placement. And notice that there's four points. And then you want your, your zone. There's ways to start your zone where it's the pattern, the design, sorry, is going to start. You can alternate so it can start here and then it'll come back this direction. Or it always starts from the left. We want it to alternate. We're not worried about that. And then the sewing direction, how the sewing machine is going to sew is really important as well. So you want it to go back and forth or you want it continuous. If it's continuous, it's going to sew those lines down it. So no, we don't want continuous on this quilt. Now, if it was sewing up and off, yes, you would want continuous. So, and then it's the same direction, but with the same direction, it's always going to go over one side and then you'll have this big, long stretch. So we want it to sew back and forth. Notice that it's not giving me those sewing lines down. And now that we've picked all of our areas, we're still on zone one. We'll say, okay. Okay. So now we're going to place our design on our quilt. Okay. So these corners here, this top left and this top right are my first two placements, okay? So they're going to be my A and my B. I got my stickers here for my next zone where I'll need the stickers to mark the next zone, okay? So I'm just gonna move up here and I'm just gonna move right here in the corner and I'm gonna tap on A. Now, if you thought that you were going to um, have problems, I would use the stickers on A and B because then you have a mark to go back to. So you can do that and you can place it as many times as you want. So just to err on the side of caution, this is something that you really don't have to do, but if you ever ran into problems and you didn't know where your marks were or if you hadn't marked them correctly, because really we don't have an exact mark, this will really help you get back in and realign your pattern or your design that you're quilting and give you those exact markings. So if you went over here to the left, right here, and then you got into your toolbox and you did your single stitch. Okay, notice I have my hole now. So now I can just place that over there and that's gonna be my first mark. So if I need to come back in and realign my design, I have my mark. All right, I'm gonna pull it across and that's my A. And now I'm just going to do my B. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna come in here to my toolbox, do a little single stitch. Ah, that was up a little high, but we're gonna go for it. Yeah, I don't want it that high. I'm gonna do the second one. So I'll put a little X on the second one. 
There we go. Um, so I know that it's not that one. And then I'm just going to leave it right there. And I'm going to mark my B. Okay. Hey, so that's my design. That I And my placement. Okay. And I'm just going to mark out this one right here. And mark this one. Okay. All right. So now I, I don't have to mark my C and Ds. Okay. Because it's just going to sell. But remember, I told you I was going to use the gold features and a pattern eclipse. Okay. So I want to use two features. I want to show you um, the marking tool and the gold feature. So I want to come up here to my plugins because that's where you'll find both. I want to come into my marking tool and you say, why do you have to use the marking tool? Well, there's no definite markings right here on the top. So when you go in to mark um, and crop out the section in Eclipse, this will um, stop you. Using the marking tool will stop you from overreaching your corners and stuff. So you know exactly where you're at. So I'm just going to move over here. And I'm just going to mark this area. And I'm just going to do add. Go all the way across. And do add. And come down. Add. And you don't have to use the marking tool. I just wanted to show you because it's available and why not? I mean, if you're going to be exactly and precise, it, it's really important to use it. So I now that I have my square marked, okay, now I've just marked so I have something to go off of on the screen. So I can see where I'm supposed to make my markings to crop it out. So I want to come back up to plugins and notice you've got pattern eclipse. Okay, there's my design. Now I want to make sure that I'm doing I'm on the keep out because I want the outer section to quilt. Okay, I don't want it inside. Now you can have keep out or keep in, doesn't matter. So I'm going to come up here to my top corner and then I'm just going to go add. And I'm going to close my loop, okay? I'll show you on the next one how you quilt to ne in the next zone, okay? I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to say how good it is. <gasps> Notice I have all these croppings, okay? That's because I didn't pick a border on it. Now, it... I wanted to show you this so that you could see, okay, how the design is made. It's going to jump from one section to the other. Now, if I had a, a, a design that I didn't want it to sew on, um, I would keep these clippings. But I don't really care because I just want a nice little border around it. So I'm going to come back in right here to plugins. I'm going to say reset to reset my design and then I'm going to come up here and come back into pattern eclipse. If I don't reset, it's not going to show me. Okay. So with my pattern eclipse, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew an eclipse border and this is what it looks like in the preview. Okay, so this darker line is the line that it's going to sew back and forth on it in these areas. If you don't want that look, that's fine. Then just have it stop and start. There's no problem with it stopping and starting as many times as it needs to to create your design. It's totally up to you. Okay, so if that's what you want and that's what I want, or you can check it out and see what continuous looks like and preview it. And see, it's kind of sewing a little differently. <laughs> so it's going to be continuous, but I see I'm going to have those sewing lines right along the top. 
I don't want that because I don't want it to sew across right there. So that's okay. So I just want to sew a border and say, okay. And I may change my mind, okay? But this is how it's going to sew. And I'll have one little trim line right there. And so I've already placed it. So we're going to come over here and see about where we are going to start. And now I am going to bring my thread up and just pull it. So what, you notice what I did? I put my needle down in and I pushed it back to the side to pull my bottom thread up. So now we're going to quilt, okay? So I'm going to show you this first little section and then we'll move on to the next. So I know this is a little boring part. Well, maybe it's boring just listening to me talk and you'd rather hear it so. So that's what we're going to do. So, 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 so. And see, I was way off. <laughs> and you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I would rather have it not so the lines can look at it sewed off here. So it's important for you to learn how the designs are going to look. Then I'm showing you one design, and then we're going to have it stop and start. But kind of fun, just so you can see what it does. Yeah, and notice I wouldn't have done that because it went up and off. Oh, well, learn from me, okay? It's what I'm here for. And notice I kind of my placement in the middle. There we go. Still there. So I have another box right down here. We're gonna crop out as well for zone two. So I'm gonna show you how to crop it out of the zone so it doesn't resell over. And in the box, I'll put Sweet Baby or Baby Grace or something. <laughs> Don't have any Baby Graces right now, but you never know. Not going to be me having them. <laughs> That's why I had it sewing a larger design. I didn't want to be here all day having you watch it sew, but it, I want you to see what it looks like. So we're, we're moving to the next zone. Then make sure that you understand and know what size. So this is a simple design, and um, my stitches per inch, they look really good. Now, if it was more of a circle design, I may want them just a teeny bit smaller, but just experiment with them before you start quilting. And that's the thing with four point placement. If you don't get it exactly right there in the corner, but that's where you're seeing these come in. So it kind of pulls it over. But 
that, you don't know how far down it's going to quilt. So, so see, it stopped. So I have a little trim line, which is okay, okay? So I'm just going to pull on my threads right here to kind of give it a little slack. And then I'm going to say, move to next. So it's going to move down to where it's going to start. And then I'll clip that thread later, okay? And then I'm just going to say, so. I'm going to get some instructions written up on how to use it. Just give me time. It's busy times here at the Grace Company. Um, I hope you are getting ready and you're signing up for the fall festival. Uh, make sure that you sign up to see all the great ones. Oh, we have some great speakers, um, some fun classes for you to attend. Then it's going to just quote this last little section. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to um, mark our next zone, our next section, okay, and crop out around it. So I wanna pull up my thread. So before I tap on finish zone, I wanna make sure that it's pulled up, my bobbin thread is pulled up. So I'm gonna move it back and I can use my single stitch here. And notice how I'm holding on to this and I'm just pulling it away to pull that bottom thread up, grab my scissors and cut. Now my thread's cut. Now I can move on to my next quilting area, okay? Where my stickers will come in handy, okay? So now when we tap on finish zone, it says, have you completed sewing the zone? Yes, we have. This includes pulling the bobbin thread and making any needed repairs. This will also clear all pattern eclipse regions, okay? If so, touch yes to advance to the next zone. And we're gonna say yes. So now it's going to mark, okay? It's gonna to move to where I need to mark my next zone. Okay, notice this is my zone marking screen. Okay, so I want you to see this screen, this little section right here. We're going to mark 2B. 2B, it's not 2B, it's going to be 2B, okay? We're gonna mark it right over here, all right? And I'm gonna put my little sticker underneath the foot, okay? And then I'm gonna tap right here on the screen where it says single stitch, okay? Now I kinda of wanna pull it over just a little bit. That little, okay, so I'm gonna do my single stitch. Give it a second, okay? It's right there on the very edge, but that's okay. It's right there on the very edge as I'm marking. And I wanna write on the sticker, Two, oh, come on, come on, two, B. Well, I can see it. You might not be able to, but I can see it, okay? That's two, B. All right, now I want to tap on move to next mark. So this is the next mark. So it's going to move across and mark my next mark. And notice it's not exactly straight on there. So. Just be careful as you're marking. So then we want to do single stitch. Give it a second. It's a little slow and do 2A. All right. Well, you can't read it, but I can. Okay. 
So we're okay. I'm just going to pull my thread out so it doesn't pull my sticker off. And now we want to, it's not, I can't reach to do any other marks, okay? So it says I'm done. Okay, so I'm done marking the two most important ones right now, and I want to tap on continue. So now it's going to move to where I'm going to roll one of these stickers. So it's going to move up, and it says, are you sure all of the zone markers have been properly placed? Okay, if so, touch yes. So yes, we are. And now it says the machine will now move to where the fabric marker for the next zone should be positioned. And say, okay. So it does all the work for you. That's what's so cool. I don't really have to guess or anything, but it's doing all the work for me. So now I have a place where, now if I was finished um, for the day, you could stop at this point, but you always have to mark your marks before you stop for the day, okay? Make sure that you remember that. Even if you're quilting with the center placement, always, always stop and make sure that you have these markings before you close out for the day, okay? So now I can unclip my quilt clip and I can release this pull and I could just roll it up. And now I'm watching the sticker. My big fat hand is in the way. Watching the sticker. And it doesn't have to be exact. But notice, I'm not right exactly on. But as I move this back, it's going to be right in the right spot. Okay? And it doesn't have to be exact because you're, you're going to move it just slightly to fix it. Okay? So I'm going to realign it. Okay? And now I'm going to say, okay, move the fabric marker so that the marker is beneath the sewing machine needle. This does not have to be precise, okay? But try to get it as close as possible. And we're gonna say, okay, have you moved the fabric? These are just all these little warnings. I know you get tired of them, but oh, they're so important because they're just reminders. Um, have you moved the fabric? Touch OK after the fabric marker 2A has been positioned under the needle. And remember, this is my 2A, this is my 2B, OK? And say OK. All right, so now I'm going to move that, and I'm just going to position my needle. So now, now I have my markings. I'm going to do my placement, okay? That, just because you've moved your sticker underneath the foot doesn't mean that the design is placed on the quilt, okay? You have to do your placements. So, I just want it to come in, so I'm just gonna mark it right here, right here, and I'm gonna do A. And notice, have my mark tool marks, okay? And then over here, I, right here, I'm doing my B. Now I, because I'm off just a little bit, I'm just gonna move it over just a little. I'm gonna give it a little nudge. We'll see what it does, okay? All right, and I'm going to do B. But make sure it's on the same level as your mark. Now you can remark them if you feel like you haven't got it right on that same level. Okay, so I remarked it. Okay, so now, I'm not even gonna use the marking tool because it didn't work so well the last time. So we're gonna go into plugins <laughs> right here, marking tool, and I'm just going to remove all, okay? And I'm gonna say okay. So now I'm gonna come down here and now I'm not gonna crop it all out, okay? I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have it start and stop so that you can see what it looks like. All right, so I want to come over here so I could do my C and my D. You could do D right along here if you wanted to. Just to make sure it sewed. We'll see what it does. Can you see how it pulled it out just a little bit? That's where your C and D come in real handy on this placement method, okay? And I'm just coming over here to C. Right, that's pretty straight, this one's not, okay? So anyway, 
but that's how it's rolling. And so just make your adjustments as you're moving down. That's what makes this method so nice and so cool. And that's why I really want you to try it. So now let's go into my plugins and let's pull up my Eclipse and let's hit reset. So I'm resetting my design. Let's go into plugins, go into pattern. If you have to hit reset every time, otherwise it's gonna keep the boxes all the way around it. Um, Marie and I did our testing, trust me, it will do that, okay? So now that I've hit reset our design, I can tap on, remove all, and get rid of that. All right, so now I can go around this here, and I can do my add, go all the way across my add, and then down. I did something a little simple like boxes. Now, if you're doing something more intricate, just be careful and take your time. And do them in increments, it'll make it smoother. So if you're going around a heart or anything like, or design like that, see, um, then you wanna move in smaller increments. And the smaller the increments all the way around, the smoother the design will look in um, Eclipse. So as I'm teaching, yeah, th there are some ladies that like to not hurry and make it nice and perfect, and there are others that don't. Whatever quilter you are, you have options. So now that I've marked everything, we can say, okay. I didn't show you the preview, I forgot, sorry. All right, I do have a, a clipping and I still have my border. So let me go back in. Let me reset my design because it's gonna keep that a border all the way around it if I don't reset it, okay? But I've already had my placements, okay? So we're okay. So I'm just gonna come back in, go back into the Eclipse. I forget, so you have to remind me, okay? So I don't want the border at all on this one. So we're just gonna see what it looks like. So I'm just gonna start up here at the top. Here's your chance to see what I'm doing. And I'm just, and, and I've already kept it, but I've reset my design. So I don't have to go around it again. And I can see the preview. I just needed to reset this pattern right here. So that's what it's gonna look like. Pretty cool, huh? And then tap on this, get out of it and say, okay. So now we'll have a lot of stops and starts, but that's okay. We're not gonna finish this whole process um, today. I just want to get you started so that you understand, and then I'll stop it and finish it after, okay? So anyway, this is what it's going to sew like. So we're going to come over here. We're going to see where our starting point is. So it's probably down here in this area, I'm guessing. And you could say pull bobbin and then move to that. I just, um, pull bobbin is a little slower and I'm a little quicker quilter. So um, you quilt how you like to quilt. If you like to use the pull bobbin, by all means do it. Um, it's totally up to you to quilt how you like to. So I just moved it down to where I think it might start quilting and we're just gonna tap on sew and just know we're gonna have a stop up here. There we go. It's a little better, my placement was a little better. So just know as you're using this placement method, you can kind of tweak it, which is kind of, it's kind of nice. And it's not like the center placement where you can't. Now, let me talk to you about the Eclipse. As you're cropping out around your designs, okay, make sure that you're not going back over um, where you've already marked again. You can easily do that because you can forget what you're doing, especially on a block or a triangle that you're forgetting. You can go back up. So if you're going around, you'll have a start point and a end point, okay? Make sure that you're, you're using those to your advantage. And make sure it doesn't necessarily, yeah, it kind of does. It kind of has to be a closed loop. Um, and so if this were down here and I didn't want it to sew the bottom portion of it, I would just sew outside the area and crop it out and then move across. So we'll get some written instructions, but play around with it. Um, you don't have, just put a practice piece of fabric on and try it. 
it's so much fun and you'll get better and better every time you try it. And it's kind of fun. It just, it just helps you to understand how it works before you start working on your beautiful quilt. So testing and playing around, I can't reiterate how important it is for you to um, really get in there and try it. Uh, sorry, this is the little boring part. <laughs> but as you're watching it, what we're going to do, I probably should have put another area right here. But like I said, this is kind of one of those clubs that uh, we'll use for a baby to throw up on, and it'll be fun. And I hope you've all signed up for the Fabulous Fall Festival. Um, and we look forward to uh, making sure that you have an account. You've entered your quilts. Uh, very important. And again, the reason I'm showing you these tips and tricks today is because of your emails. So thank you. You just give me ammunition so that I can show you what needs to be shown. And I really appreciate it. So again, if you have any questions, you need to email me, okay? Don't try and call me because I'm not good with the phone, okay? I promise you I will answer your emails and help you out. Um, so make sure that you email me at Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com. So now notice this, I pulled on my threads to give it some slack and now I can tap on and make sure your needle's up, move to next, okay? So now it's going to move back up that way or it's good, oh, look, it's gonna make one big long leap. Now, I if I would have been looking at the screen, I probably would have cut my thread. And I will do that right now, because <laughs> I don't want that long thread underneath. So look at it. All right, so I will do my single stitch and pull that thread up. So that's what's great about that toolbox. Come on, a single stitch. And now I can swipe this underneath and pull that big long thread out, okay? So if you do have a move like that, make sure that you bring it up and cut it off. Not a big problem. All right, so now it's gonna start right there. Now we're gonna just tap on sew. I'll do it one more time after this. I'll answer some questions if you have some. If you don't, that's awesome. I just want you to go play. Well, that wasn't very long, was it? <laughs> so we'll probably move across. So we'll just pull on up just a little, say move to next. And you may not like this look around the box, but if you had an applique, you would appreciate that you could stop and start. Okay. Um, yes, Lucy, I will do a video using the fonts sometime because they're a lot of fun. But there again, there are a lot of stops and starts, but it is a lot of fun to show that. Um, yes, next week I am starting on the hoop frame. In fact, Brenda, I am pre-recording um, on the hoop um, on the cutie frame and the automation using your home domestic machine. So um, I will be doing that right after this. So look forward to next week so that you can see how that's done, how it's set up. And I'm going to jump in and start showing you um, how to quilt just block designs. And then the week after that, when after I'm back, I'm going to show you an edge to edge design using the hoop frame. So very excited about that. So let me just get this started one more time, and then I will bid you farewell for about 10 minutes, and then I'll pre-record next week's, okay? So we just hit sew. Now, I don't recommend leaving all these little um, dangling threads across your quilt, so bring them up and pull them up. But notice how the design looks. It looks pretty good. So it, it's nice and even and it's sewing straight. So 
you've got the idea. I'm going to let you go and play. I'm going to get my pre-recorded for next week done. But I really appreciate you taking time and spending time with me today. Um, your questions actually help me become a better quilter because Marie and I are always working out, uh, trying to figure out what you've done so that we can duplicate it and, and learn and glean from it. So thank you very much for being a part of the Grace Company family and helping us help you. And I will see you next week. Pre-recorded, know that. So. If you have questions, make sure you email me because I love to answer them. And I bid you farewell and have a good, safe week. Bye-bye.